Hi, I am Mrs. Hannah Angelin. In this video, we shall discuss about kinematic indeterminacy of structures. In my previous lectures, I have discussed about static indeterminacy of structures. If you have missed watching it, I will give the link in the description box. Kindly watch it. Here in this video, we shall discuss what are the degrees of freedom or the kinematic indeterminacy for any structure and how it can be determined. Now we shall see what is kinematic indeterminacy of structures. It is defined as the number of independent joint displacements in the form of translation or rotation that define the deformed shape of the structure. So here I will explain. It shows number of independent joint displacements as translation or rotation. Translation in the stents either in the horizontal direction or in the vertical direction. If it is a three dimensional structure along three directions x, y and z. Same way if it is two dimensional rotation is a type of displacement we have a value of theta. If it is three dimensional we have theta x, theta y and theta z. I have shown the possible displacements for different types of structures. For a one dimensional rigid beam, delta H, delta V and theta all are possible. Delta H horizontal displacement, delta V vertical displacement and theta the rotation that is a slope. These three are possible at all joints in a rigid beam. In case of a two dimensional pin jointed structure, delta H and delta V that is horizontal displacement and vertical displacement only two types of displacements are possible at all joints. Since the joints are pin jointed it releases the moment and no rotation takes place. So for a pin jointed two dimensional structure the number of possible displacements at any joint is 2. Next let us see for rigid jointed structure. If it is two dimensional rigid jointed structure there are three possible types of displacements we have seen this in one dimensional also here delta h delta v and theta totally three so when i'm going to tell us a rigid jointed structure rcc structures are rigid jointed structures so two dimensional structures have dimensions in both directions let us take about x and y or y z or x and z. Three dimensional structures if it is pin jointed examples are space trusses. At each joint delta x, delta y and delta z three types of translational displacements are possible. In case of a three dimensional rigid jointed structure there are six possible types of displacement delta x, delta y, delta z theta x, theta y, theta z. So let me show you how this type of displacement is possible. This diagram shows the planes along three axes x, y and z. So here fx is the force along x direction, fy is the force along y direction and fz is the force along z direction. So if a force is along x direction it causes a displacement as delta x. The force along y direction causes displacement delta y. Force along z direction causes displacement delta z. In x y plane moment will take place in the z direction. Here let me consider y z plane. In y z plane moment will act along x direction. In x z plane moment will act along y direction. So here I can tell there are six possible displacements in a three dimensional rigid jointed structure examples are space frames delta x delta y delta z theta x theta y theta z. So we can form equations to determine kinematic indeterminacy for these type of structures here delta h delta v and theta three possible displacements exist at each joint. So my kinematic indeterminacy calculation equation 
will be 3j minus r. To determine the degree of kinematic indeterminacy, I write it as 3j minus r. So in short, I have written KID as kinematic indeterminacy. 3j minus r because at each joint, I have three possible displacements. Same way, for a two-dimensional pin-jointed structure, my equation is 2j minus r because at each joint, I have two possible displacements. For two-dimensional rigid jointed structures, I have again three displacements possible. So, my equation turns out to be 3j minus r. For pin jointed structures, delta x, delta y, delta z, we had three values of displacements possible. Again, I write 3j minus r. And here, in three-dimensional rigid jointed structures, I have six possible displacements. So, my expression turns out to be 6j minus r. So, for any structure, if I know what is the number of j, that is the number of joints. j denotes joints. r denotes redundance or the restraints at the support. So, if I know the number of joints and the restraints, if we calculate the restraints at the support, we can determine the degree of kinematic indeterminacy or otherwise known as degrees of freedom for any structure. So here kinematic indeterminacy deals with displacements and this we use in stiffness method of analysis since it is a displacement method. In static indeterminacy we consider the forces hence we make use of static indeterminacy in force method of analysis. Now we shall see the principle of superposition. Let us consider a set of loads act on a cantilever beam. Delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 are the deflection under the points 1, 2 and 3 when all the loads W1, W2 and W3 act on the beam together. So this can be equated such that each load can be applied on the beam at points 1, 2 and 3 one at a time and the deflection due to each load is determined at all points where I have loads in the original beam and the values can be superimposed to get the net displacement. Delta 1 can be determined as a summation of delta 1 1, delta 1 2 and delta 1 3. So all under same points that is 1 when each load is considered individually. Same way delta 2 can be determined as delta 2 1, delta 2 2 and delta 2 3. Delta 2 can be determined as the summation of delta 2 1, delta 2 2, delta 2 3. And again third, delta 3 can be determined that is when all the loads are taken together, what is the displacement at node 3 that is delta 3 can be determined as summation of delta 3 1, delta 3 2, delta 3 3 when all the loads are taken individually. That is what is given as the equation here. Delta 1 is summation of all the displacement at point 1 when each loads are taken separately. Same way delta 2 is the summation of all the displacements at point 2 when each load is taken separately and same way delta 3. The total deflection below W3 is delta 3. So for a complex structure, if there are n number of loads acting on a structure, the total or the net displacements below each load calculation is tedious. In that case, calculation of displacements can be done by taking each load separately and finding the effect at other points. So here I have equated this structure to a beam carrying first load alone and finding the displacement at all points where I had the loading. Next, loading at the second point alone and finding the effect of this load at all loaded points. Third, applying the load at the third point alone, then determining the displacements at all the nodes concerned. So if 
I am going to superimpose the effect of displacement due to the load W1 at joint 1 and the effect of W2 at point 1, the effect of W3 at point 1, then I will get the net deflection at point 1 when all the loads act together on the beam. The deflection at point 2 is, can be determined when one load on, is on the beam at point 1. At the same point, I can find what is the effect of displacement when the second load alone is acting on the beam. Same way I can find what is the displacement when third load alone is acting on the beam. Now superimposing the effect of this displacement with this displacement with this displacement if I superimpose the displacement at all these points I get the net load at point 2. Same way point 3. Let us see the principle of superposition. If a structure supports several loads acting together, then the displacements can be determined as the sum of these quantities due to each loads acting alone. The major reason for assuming the linear behavior of structure is that it allows the use of principle of superposition. This is valid only for a material from which the structure is composed remains within its linear range when all the loads are acting together. This is one of the important principles that we will be using in analysis of structures. This is called principle of superposition. The basic assumptions made in the analysis of structure convert the infinite degrees of freedom into finite degrees of freedom. Convert the actual support condition to an ideal support condition. The structure is linearly elastic. Principle of superposition is valid. Deformations are negligible.